The stock market is on a roll. There's a lot of money that's being made out there from investors that bought stocks a year ago or five years or 10 years ago even. But we've seen EV stocks largely have just collapsed. And a lot of people are bargain shopping there right now, taking a look for opportunities for when the cycle is going to turn. We're going to take a look at a couple of companies that have some parts of their business that are related to electric vehicles. See if we can find some opportunity. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, we've got a deal for you. Go to fool.com forward slash unscripted. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. You need to check out that link. Again, fool.com forward slash unscripted. You see it right on the screen. Okay, now I'm going to show you on the screen the two stocks that we're going to talk about today, and both are way down from their recent and all-time highs. We've got Enphase Energy. Stock is down about 67%. ChargePoint Holdings. Stock is down a ton more, down 95%. Either way, if you bought those stocks anytime over the past couple of years, there's a very good chance that you're probably losing money. Now, how do these two companies relate to EVs? If you follow ChargePoint at all, if you don't know the company, they are a EV charging business. Their business is producing EV chargers, providing some services for residential chargers and also for commercial customers as well with EV charging stations. Now, Enphase is better known for its solar business. It makes the electronics that go on solar panels that turn that power from the sun from DC into AC, get it into the grid so all of our stuff in our homes and businesses can use it. They also have a wonderful ecosystem connecting energy storage together, managing your power. But also something they've begun to really aggressively invest in is EV charging, specifically for residential chargers. That seems to be their focus right now. And they have a lot of things they're bringing online. They already have chargers online, but they're bringing even more that offer things like bi-directional charging, the ability to use your EV as a battery backup to take the energy in your battery, in your EV, potentially sell it back onto the grid during peak demand periods. Enphase is one of the companies that's leading that charge as well. So both of these stocks have a lot at stake when it comes to the success of electric vehicles. All right, let's take a closer look at both companies. Talk about what's going on that's driven the stock prices down so much, why there might be opportunity for one or both of these, and where I think investors should consider putting money right now. Let's start with ChargePoint. So we see this slide from its most recent, recent presentation, just a short explanation of what its business is. Again, personal vehicles, you see the charging stations with the personal automobiles connected to it. And then you see these higher amperage, heavy duty chargers for medium and heavy duty vehicles for charging vehicle fleets. The picture on the right, for example, this is a Frito-Lay truck that would be used for short delivery hauls. So a heavier duty vehicle, you got to get more current. You want to try and charge it as fast as possible in that much larger battery pack than you would have in, say, a Tesla or another electric vehicle brand. That's the core business. Again, they don't want to make money just selling the chargers. They have some subscriptions and services that they generate revenue for, for as well. What's happened with the company that sent its stock down so much? A couple things are going on. Number one, we've seen widely, and this has been particularly true in the core marketplace that um, ChargePoint serves in North America, we've seen weakening and softening of demand for EVs. All of the startups have started to struggle with EV demand. As I'm recording this video, Fisker looks like it's on the verge of bankruptcy. And then we look more broadly across the rest of the ecosystem. Growth is slowing for the ones that have had some growth, Tesla, for example, and we've seen just real troubles for the ones that are trying to get to some level of scale as demand has softened. We've seen the larger automakers back off their near-term goals, and they're pushing things a little bit further out. As interest rates have gone up with inflation, has made it more expensive to manufacture these vehicles and sell them at a profit. Everything in the industry is in a little bit of a lull right now, and that's directly affected ChargePoint, who's seen its revenues go from growth to starting to have a little bit of more quarter-on-quarter -quarter decline. Now, what about Enphase? Enphase is, again, its core business, the vast majority of its business is tied to solar. So those panel level electronics that it makes that go on the solar panel, convert the power to DC, get it onto the grid. That business has just fallen off of a cliff. We've seen their revenues decline substantially. The revenues that they're projecting for the first quarter really take them back to 2018, 2019 levels of revenue. 
the cycle has turned really brutally negative for that. Again, their EV charging systems business is just getting started. Now, from a growth perspective, their energy storage business is actually still growing. That's going pretty well. It's softened a little bit. Growth has slowed a little bit as installations of solar panels has gone negative, has weakened. But that business is still relatively healthy and going pretty good, even as the, we go through this down cycle. Now, so what happens next? Well, ideally, we're just going through a cycle. The automotive industry goes through these cycles all the time. Every few years, the industry goes from growth, where consumers have more money, they're buying vehicles, to some sort of a catalyst, affects demand, prices go up, fuel prices go up, and people stop buying expensive SUVs, for example. Interest rates affect the purchasing power for these very expensive items. And in, in the case right now, obviously, interest rates have played a big role in slowing demand for expensive new vehicles. Now, we've seen interest rates have softened a little bit. The Fed still saying that they're going to be hopefully cutting rates a little bit later this year. Whether that happens or not remains to be seen. But overall, the interest rates that consumers have been able to get, they have come down from the peak over the past year and a half. So eventually, we're going to get to a point where demand is going to start opening back up a little bit. We're also seeing more scale coming online for things like uh, battery manufacturing capacity. That's expected to continue to lower the costs for batteries. That should help with affordability and hopefully return to some level of growth. Now, charge point, the challenge is that there's a lot more competition now. We've seen Tesla so far has been essentially the biggest winner in the charging space with partnerships with basically all of the large automotive manufacturers. The changeover to the Tesla plug that it developed away from other standards of chargers. Now, of course, that just means that ChargePoint's going to have to figure out how to adapt in that environment. But that means with the supercharger network expanding and more auto, more vehicles having access to it than just Tesla, that immediately means that it's more of a challenge for ChargePoint. Home charging stations, competition has also increased there. The other stock we're talking about on this video, Enphase, is moving into that business because the entire ecosystem, that potentially gives them a leg up. If you already have Enphase in your home with your solar panels or you have an Enphase battery, the Enphase app. So full disclosure, I'm an Enphase customer as well as an Enphase shareholder. And I can tell you from personal experience that the app and the ecosystem is really easy to use. If you're already an Enphase customer, you're more likely to stay an Enphase customer. So that's one thing that could potentially weaken ChargePoint. We've also seen more industrial manufacturers get into charging stations so when it becomes a commodity item, which in a lot of cases, companies and customers that are looking at a ChargePoint solution are largely price-driven, it makes it that much harder for ChargePoint to win. Now, I will tell you this, that has largely shown up in ChargePoint's bottom line. Let's take it a look at a couple of slides that break down the financial results. We'll start with the revenue picture before we get into cash flows and balance sheets. First of all, revenue growth has been pretty strong for both of these companies in recent years, Enphase revenue, we've seen more of a decline at Enphase over the past really three quarters or so, but still revenue has tripled over the past five years. Uh, charge point revenue is up about 246%, even including the decline that we've seen over the past few quarters. Here's where the rubber meets the road, though, and things have been very different for these two companies. You see the green and blue down at the bottom, that's charge point. And at the top, you see the orange and purple. That's Enphase. Now, of course, Enphase earns substantially more revenue, but the key is that even as Charger Point revenue has grown, we haven't seen its cash flows scale. Now, that was as certainly not been the case for Enphase. Enphase has consistently been generating lots of free cash flow off of its operating cash flow over the past five years. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take Enphase stock off of here. And you'll see even as uh, ChargePoint's revenues increased, its cash burn also increased. That's not the kind of operating leverage you want to see. With Enphase, we've seen the, the opposite. We've seen what we want to see happen, which is as revenue grows, you get strong operating leverage. Okay, so I say that and you might say, well, the businesses are at different phases of their life and their growth. Enphase is a, a little more mature business. It's reached a point of scale where it can be cash flow generative and ChargePoint's still trying to scale. Okay, sure, you can say that to a certain extent, but 
the realities are what they are. I want to share one more slide here and talk a little bit about balance sheets. And that's where these cash flows really matter. Because as much as you can say, ChargePoint is at a different phase of its business, it's also running out of time. This is a look at the balance sheet, the things that really matter the most right now for both of these businesses, and that's cash and debt. And at the top end phase, again, with the caveat that it's been around longer, it's more established, all of those things to be true, about $1.7 billion in cash versus a little under $1.3 billion in debt. So that gives it a very strong net cash position of about $400 million. And again, this is a business that has continued to generate positive cash flow, right? So it has a margin of safety and it's been making positive cash flow. So even if it does struggle and those cash generation turns into cash burn, significant margin of safety there. Now, charge point, as we can see, its cash position, we go back to 2021, cash position was over $600 million. That number has been cut down substantially. At the same time, it took on almost $300 million in debt that now sits on its balance sheet that it added back in 2022. And now its net cash position is, call it $45 million, $45 million in net cash for a business that burned over $300 million in cash last year. Now, does that mean things are over for ChargePoint? Well, the stock is less than $2 a share at recent prices. So the market is certainly being very cautious and clearly thinks that the future is not very bright for ChargePoint. The company's trying to make some changes there. Rick uh, Wilmer, who came in as CEO very recently, he came in as COO in 2022 and less than a year ago, he was named CEO, is moving quickly to make some changes. Back in January, they announced some pretty substantial restructuring, including a 12% reduction in its global workforce. CFO is out. They have an interim CFO while they look to find a replacement and try to get their financial house in order. So they're taking actions. The question is whether or not those actions are going to pay off in time or not. That's the concern with ChargePoint. Put it all together and you have a business with ChargePoint that's got a very slim margin of safety in its balance sheet, continues to burn cash, and is working backwards to cut costs to try to get to the point where it can bridge to its future. Now, the company does have over $100 million available to it on a re undrawn revolving credit instrument, so it could tap even more debt. I think about $150 million is the total on its revolver as of January. So there's potential to, to tap more liquidity if needed, but at this point, things are getting slim. Let's go back to Enphase, and I think it's pretty obvious at this point where I stand on these two. But one thing that is really beneficial for Enphase is they're built to write out these cyclical periods, their CapEx light. They work with contract manufacturers and they recently made some big changes with their contract manufacturers, both to reduce the operating costs tied to that by shuttering two facilities, one in the US and also one in Europe. But they're shifting capacity to one of those US facilities to be able to leverage up and expand that capacity as demand recovers. So what does that mean? Not only are they able to cut costs a little bit, manage their costs through the downturn of the cycle, but also they're positioning the business to leverage tax incentives in the U.S. for their manufacturing business. That's a real positive in terms of being able to boost cash flows, preserve liquidity, get through this downturn, and also be able to leverage all their available assets when the market does start to turn for solar. So put it all together. I think investors right now should really be staying away from ChargePoint. It could be a really attractive risk reward investment. But at less than $2 a share, the market is saying that the expectation is that the company, the probability of it going bankrupt is very high at this point. If it doesn't, it could be a massive winner. But if Wilmer and, and his team can't turn the ship, there's a very good chance that investors, even at a buck fifty a share, you could still lose 99% of your investment or even 100%. So I think investors should be very cautious about it. You want to think about a good risk reward investment to me? I think Enphase is that. And I think EVs could be a big part of that as that EV charging system business really grows into something more material.